It's my pleasure today to be uh, speaking with uh, uh, Emeritus Professor Robert Kagan, Professor of Political Science and Law at University of California in Berkeley. Bob has a, a glittering uh, scholarly career. He's a fellow of the Academy of Arts and Sciences and he's the recipient of all sorts of uh, honours and awards over many years. Bob, we're really delighted to have you here visiting uh, at the Australian National University and particularly in the College of Asia and Pacific. You've spent a lifetime uh, thinking about the interaction of law and politics and you've, uh, you've famously argued that the American legal system is quite distinctive globally and that, uh, as you call it, the American way of law is, is characterised by adversarial legalism. Can you tell us what you mean by that and how it's distinctive globally? I, I, I learned about this distinction by reading studies, collecting studies that compare the American legal system with others and how they, not just what the law is, but how the institutions and the processes actually operate. And when I do that, I see a pattern of American laws are more legalistic in the sense that they're more detailed, more prescriptive, denser, and more complex. And the same thing with our regulations. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, and it's more, ad the system is more adversarial in that the, the uh, legal conflict more fully pervades uh, not merely the courts, but everyday life, uh, particularly in government and in business. And once inside the courtroom or inside regulatory and administrative agencies, there's more clashing of lawyers. They're less top-down and bureaucratic in their operation. And lawyers and legal conflict generate. The parties have a larger role and lawyers play a larger role mm -hmm. in shaping outcomes and in, in creating the ideas that lead to new legal mm. outcomes. Mm. One of the, your themes that uh, intrigued me was to, the, or the way you've emphasized that we need to understand legal systems as being embedded in wider social uh, and political mm. contexts. And you've pointed out that in your own country, uh, there's been a, a powerful conservative challenge um, to what had been um, established uh, norms and practices mm -hmm. uh, in the legal world. Um, and that's particularly been over the last 10 to 15 years that this has been evident. Mm. Can you tell us some more about that and what some of the consequences of that, um, of that as you call it, conservative counterattack have been? I think, the conser I think of it as a counterattack or maybe even a backlash. Mm -hmm. the adversarial legalism has been part of the American legal system, part of the American way of governing itself mm -hmm. from in the late 19th century, uh, I mean the late 18th century, when, mm -hmm. when, from when the constitutions of the state and the federal governments were, were created. But in the post-World War II period, there was a big explosion of adversarial legalism. It came with the growth of the regulatory state, and, uh, and it came with the growth of a, what I call a culture of total justice, mm -hmm. a term I get from legal historian Lawrence Friedman, mm. in which people came to demand more of government, or more demands for governments to uh, 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 control pollution, to make the world safer, uh, uh, to, uh, to diminish uh, discrimination or to attack discrimination, to make, uh, the, the, to make uh, more procedural fairness in every area of life, more rights for people to claim against government, governmental arbitrariness or corporate arbitrariness. Mm. Um, and this led to a, a, a much more uh, activist mode of constitutional and statutory interpretation by courts. And it led to um, uh, much sweeping legislation that was enforced to a large extent by litigation as well as by governmental mm. agencies. Conservatives have seen this as, in some ways, anti-democratic, thinking that it, too much authority is gone, goes to regulatory authorities and to courts. But more importantly, I think it, the, the backlash comes from the business community that doesn't like being sued all the time. Mm -hmm. um, 
And um, it and so conservatives in the legal profession organize to try to change legal ideas, to try to place, develop new conservative legal ideas, or, or they thought of the displacement of all, react against the old displacement of legal ideas by this total justice kind of ideas and judicial activism and law as a tool of social engineering and to try to create a more limited state, go back to constitutional interpretations mm -hmm before the New Deal that limited the state, that limited the federal government power vis-a-vis -vis the um, state governments, and to, and to uh, try to limit governmental intrusion into what they saw as a free market system. Mm -hmm. Is it too early to say, or would you say we've reached the high, the high watermark of, um, uh, of uh, conservative uh, backlash or rebalancing or whatever term one would like to use? I think it's hard to know that because mm. it's really a matter of politics. You mm. can have these clashes of ideas, the ideas that supported adversarial legalism, mm. the ideas of total justice, the ideas of judicial activism, mm. of rights claims against government as a good way of running a country to, you know, to mm. be more concerned about the have-nots rather than the haves. Mm. Uh, that's now more fully contested. Mm. And the extent to which the, the courts and the legislatures and the regulatory agencies move toward one or the other of those poles depends on the ebb and flow of politics. It requires, when, when, the, when, when, the, when the Republicans get more power, they appoint more conservatives to courts and to government agencies, and work can, and, or even if they don't have majorities, can block mm. new regulations that try to keep up with yeah. changing events. The more the Democrats win, the more they'll be able to push back the Republicans and we'll see more adversarial legalism. So rather than seeing it sort of rooted as the American way of law, I guess I think it's still rooted as the American way of law, but it's political valence, whether it's going to be more conservative, used for conservative goals or for more progressive goals, mm -hmm. will, ta will, will change with the political tides. Mm -hmm. Bob, you've been a visitor here with our Regulatory Studies Network, a, a group of which I have to say we're rather proud. Mm. Um, as you know, we've got a big interest in um, Asia and the Pacific. Um, what lessons do you think that we might draw, those of us, whether we're living in Australia or living or working uh, around the Asia-Pacific region, any sorts of lessons that we might be drawing from your work in thinking about countries over this side of the Pacific Ocean? If, if you, that's a good question. And I should say, I mean, I'm a big fan of your reg, regulatory institutions that work here too. People mm. who study regulation around the world are, uh, think of it as the mecca for that kind of work. Mm. Um, uh, there's a lot of aspects of adversarial legalism and about American regulation that uh, one might criticize. Uh, people all around the world, le you know, legal bureaucrats and many law professors will say, be careful when the more rights we give and the more power we give to courts and to lawyers and to litigation. Be careful or we might end up like the United States because there's been a lot of publicity about you know, excessive litigation or giant jury awards or high legal costs that tie up all, both government and business. I think the lesson that I draw from that is don't worry about that hmm. because there's such a large gap. You could, uh, if the United States is over here and the, you know, and the power of litigation and lawyers and parliamentary systems, which are mostly prov or, or exist in not only in Australia but in, 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 uh, in, in other Asian democracies, are sort of over here, um, you could make you can add a lot of legal yeast to your cake mm. and not end up being like the United States. Mm. There's and because adversarial legalism is not only cumbersome and costly when it's there's a lot of it, but it's also a terrific method for keeping government honest, for providing alternative channels for political activity, to put pressure on regulatory agencies, to provide alternative ways of enforcing laws uh, and enforcing and, 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 and developing rights and policies. Um, Bob, it's been wonderful to have you here as a visitor. Um, let me just say for any students that might be uh, watching this little clip, um, uh, 
if, uh, if, if you're interested to know more about Bob's work, be sure, of course, to be reading his books. But if you want to be in contact with him, you can find him on the internet without too much difficulty, uh, or you can be in touch with me and we can put you in touch with him. But for now, Bob, let me say thank you to you for taking time to be with us. It's a great pleasure. It's a, it's a wonderful university to visit, and it's been a, a joy for me to be here. We'll have to get you here for a third visit. I'll try. <laughs>